Quick Thinking, written by Christopher Audrey. Bill and Ben were feeling rushed off their wheels. The china clay pits where they were became busier and busier as more people asked for it. All this fuss about a bit of earth, grumbled Bill as he and Ben rolled wearily into their shed one night. Don't know what they see in it. What on earth do they want it for? I'd like to know. His driver laughed. China clay is special, he said. People are finding they can use it in all sorts of things. What sort of things? demanded Ben. Well, pottery, of course, said Bill's driver, and paper, paints, rubber, plastics, medicines, fertilizers. He paused. Is that all? asked Bill. Good gracious, no, said his driver in surprise. I still haven't mentioned. Stop, pleaded Ben. You're making my head spin. The drivers laughed again and went home to tea. Every day, Donald, Douglas or Boko came to the station at the end of Edwards Branch Line to collect a trainload of clay trucks, or hoods, as the men called them. The first time he came, Boko had wanted to know why. They're full of dried clay, Bill and Ben had explained importantly. The hoods are those pointed covers that keep it dry if it rains. Wet clay is much heavier and has to go in special tank wagons. One day when Donald arrived there, there were more trucks than he could take in one journey. Boko is following with some more empties, he explained to Bill and Ben. You'll take the rest away for you, and I'm to wait at Edward's station to help him up Gordon's Hill, where he pulls them all to the mainland. Donald took as many as he thought he could manage. It might have been better if he had been more cautious. About halfway along the branch line is a passing loop, and at the bottom of a short but quite steep hill. At the top of the hill, Donald tried to put on his brakes, but the truck surged against him. They took him by surprise and gave him a fearful bump. He tried to stop, but as more trucks ran onto the slope of the hill, they pushed harder and harder, so that Donald began to gather speed. Help! Help! He whistled. Stupid things! Stop pushing! The trucks took no notice. On! 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 They laughed and pushed harder still. Poor Donald was desperate. Sparks flew from his brake blocks, but he couldn't stop the trucks. Then he whistled again at the alarm, but beyond the loop coming towards him, he saw Boko with his empty trucks. Horrors! He whistled. Who am I going to stop to let him past? The two engines reached the loop at the same time, but by now Boko with the short train was going faster. He hoped so anyway. Whistling desperately, Donald shot past. His driver still fighted to bring the trucks under control. Boko heard Donald's whistle and gave an answering toot on his horn. Then he noticed the sparks coming from Donald's brakes. Donald, you trouble, he gasped. If he's running away, he'll never be able to stop at the loop, and he'll let us head on for sure. Boko's driver pushed the throttle wide open. Quick, he said, our train is short enough for the loop. We don't know about Donald's, we might just make it into our side so that he can have a clear run through. Leaving it as late as he dared, Boko's driver brought him safely to a halt, just as Donald crossed the points at the other end, missing Boko's guard's van by inches. Phew! remarked Boko when he had recovered his breath. That was close. When Boko eventually reached Edward Station with the rest of the clay hoods, Donald was waiting. Thank you for thinking so quickly, he said. You saved a nasty accident. Boko smiled. You had me worried for a bit, he said. Lucky my train was a short one, or I don't know what I might have happened. I do, said Donald, but I'd rather not think about it.